hidden gems of the knife world. These are knives that are great, but aren't quite getting the attention we think they deserve. So it's time to take a look at another 10 knives that we think you should know about. Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here, coming at you from the Knife Center, and welcome to the third installment of our Hidden Gem series. Uh, in previous episodes of this series, we've kind of focused on some real obscure brands, or some more obscure brands anyway, with some stuff that's really deserving of attention. This time we're going to do something a little bit different and take a look at some of the bigger name brands out there and find those things in the lineup, in their respective lineups, that kind of get overshadowed by the other stuff. And we kind of start today by a knife I showed a couple of weeks ago, and that is the Cold Steel Double Safe Hunter Slockmaster Edition. Even within the Double Safe Hunter series, probably takes a little bit of, the ba of a backseat because every other version of this features a clip point blade. And I think the Double Safe Hunter series in general deserves a little bit more recognition. So that makes this the uh, kind of perfect jumping off point for the rest of the stuff we're gonna look at. And we'll, we'll start with the least expensive and move on up the, uh, the price range today. This is about a $33 knife. Comes with a three and a half inch drop point blade, eight CR series steel. So you know, very capable stuff, especially for the price range, I would say. And a very capable blade, versatile, strong, good enough for everyday carry. And of course, outdoor uses, especially. I think it'd do a really good job. The handle's injection molded, keeps the overall package fairly light, although not an ultra light knife. Just 4.1 ounces though, very easy to carry around. Single position pocket clip on the right side here. We have a traditional lock back as opposed to Cold Steel's triad lock, but you do get, as its name suggests, or its namesake, double locking mechanism right there, the double safe hunter. Now that's gonna prevent that lock bar from being disengaged, and you can also use it in the closed position. So let's say this is for some reason not living in your pocket. You've got it in a bag or pack. Hard for something to kind of snag and pull that blade open in that receptacle. But when you're ready to go, slide the lock backwards, open the blade, and you've got a very useful knife right here at a great value. It might just be uh, one of the new standard bearers in the uh, low $30 range. At least in my opinion, this definitely fits the bill. Next up, the Spyderco Astute, coming in about uh, just under $55 right now. Now, this is kind of in the same vein or in the same line as stuff like Spyderco's Tenacious, Persistence, Ambitious folders, and there's one other one, I'm missing the, uh, the name of it off the top of my head, but it's built along those same lines. You've got full-length stainless steel liners, G10 on the scale material, and an 8CR series blade with a full flat grind. Very cool shape, nice elliptical thing, kind of branches out from uh, the typical shapes of those other knives that I mentioned. But when this was released, I think even the Tenacious had kind of been overshadowed by some of the other budget offerings out there nowadays. And as such, this knife was even more overshadowed because it was living in the Tenacious's shadow to begin with. But I think it's a really sweet knife worth another look. Price on these is just under $55. You've got full stainless steel liners right there, G10 scales, a four position pocket clip, and an 8CR series stainless blade. The length here is just over three inches. Got a really cool elliptical shape, almost like a Canadian belt knife in a way. If you squint a little bit, full flat grind, very slicey, and the ergonomics of this handle work very well for a smaller, knife that you want to remain nimble and agile without being you know, too much in your pocket. Let's compare it to that uh, Slockmaster for example. Three and a half inch blade, takes a fair bit of real estate in the pocket when in its folded configuration. And do put it in the pocket once it's folded, don't you know, put it in there before you folded it. This knife, however, folds up nice and neatly, has a smaller blade just a hair over that three inch mark but it is oh so sweet. These things are still built exceptionally well. The fit and finish on these is more than you might expect. And it maintains one of the things that I really love about the Tenacious is that when you hold the handle, the edge comes all the way back. No kind of wasted space on this design. Very, very efficiently drawn up. Next up, a newer release, which you know, it's a knife that came out earlier this year, at least at the time we're uh, filming this video. 
but immediately it's, it's already kind of in my mind going unnoticed, which is a problem because the CRKT Dextro is a very sweet knife priced very, very appropriately, I would say. Comes in about 55 bucks. You've got a broad D2 blade, a little bit over three inches, and an aluminum handle that allows a full four finger grip, even if your hands are you know, slightly larger than average like my own. This is a solid, no nonsense working flipper. Will work well for you know, tactical applications as well as just a bomb proof or very sturdy feeling anyway, everyday carry blade. You've got a folded over clip, not quite deep carry, but it is inset with flush mounted screws, a very nice consideration to make it easy when going back into your pocket, not going to snag on anything there. We've got an inset liner lock. The inset there adds a little extra niceness to the design. Ball bearings in the pivot with two opening methods. You've got your thumb studs or the flipper tab and the action is crisp, very, very sweet. I love the blade shape too. I know I mentioned that earlier already, but the drop point there is very versatile. You've got a high flat grind, but you still maintain a little bit of thickness to the spine. So if you're looking for that thing that can slice pretty well day to day, but you want to feel like you've got a little strength behind it, this blade stock and overall geometry is gonna do quite nice for you. This is a TJ Schwartz design, if you, if you couldn't tell by the name there on the back. And it all just shines through really nicely, criminally unseen right now, $55 knife that feels like a lot harder working than a lot of the 50 to $60 knives on the market today tend to feel definitely stands out above the rest in my opinion. Next up, we've got a Kershaw, another D2 bladed uh, flipper, one of uh, three we're gonna look at today. And earlier this year, actually, Kershaw came out with some crossbar locking knives and those have been getting a lot of attention. Deservedly so, I might add, but they're also kind of overshadowing something that came out uh, the year prior, and that's the Inception, which in my mind, for a you know reasonably priced Kershaw, is one of their better everyday carry designs. Three and a quarter inch blade, D2 steel, nice signature look with the uh, faceted spine there, something they're kind of riffing on in terms of style, but it still doesn't get in the way of utility. It's still a very useful blade. Stonewash finish is going to help keep the corrosion at bay just a little bit, as well as hide scratches as you use it. G10 handles, deep carry pocket clip, not inset, but we do have those flush mounted screws there, which is quite nice. The construction, despite an overall small size, feels very solid. We've got full steel liners here for a bit of extra strength. We've got an oversized barrel spacer here at the back, again, for a little bit of extra strength there, and that also doubles as a lanyard hole there too, which is nice. And we've got ball bearings in the pivot of this knife. This is not uh, an assisted opening Kershaw, something I know a lot of folks tend to not prefer these days. This has the action you want. Really, really crisp, very sweet. Everything you want is right here. And our third D2 flipper for today uh, comes in about $85. And this is one that really kind of leans into the tactical needs and tactical nature that this style can provide. And that is the SogTac XR flipper. They do make automatic versions of the SogTac nowadays, but the manual coming in at about 85 bucks, I think not only makes an excellent tactical knife, the blade itself is well suited to just everyday utility also. About 3.4 inches, full flat grind on that long clip pointed shape. Not super thick, but thick enough for strength, but overall just a fantastic slicing profile. You can get it with or without these partial serrations that you can see here and the handles really help it stand up to the heavier uses, either tactical or otherwise, just any kind of heavy duty work. You've got plenty to hold on to right there, both in terms of the thickness, as well as enough length and a neutral, design, neutral enough handle that even hands that are larger than this handle can hang off the back without feeling like you're dropping the knife. The texture on the G10, of course, helps with that a little bit. We've got a folded over pocket clip right here, which is reversible. It leaves enough of the handle sticking up out of the pocket to make grabbing it easy, either in a tactical situation or at the uh, job site. If you're wearing work gloves, you're not gonna have to fumble around to get this out of your pocket when you really need it the most. I did mention it is reversible. And in fact, everything on this knife uh, is set up so that righties or lefties can use it no problem or just use it in your offhand if you are a right-handed folk. 
We've got dual thumb studs, of course, and that crossbar lock allowing finger safe, very foolproof action right there. Works in either hand quite nicely, as mentioned. And in addition to the thumb studs, you also have that flipper tab on this knife too. A flipper on a crossbar lock, sometimes hard to pull off, but SOG has done a very good job right here of making it very useful. Fantastic blade right here. All right, next up, we've got a couple of fixed blades. The first being the Becker BK-10, which has been around you know, a good bit at this point, but it's kind of that, uh, that middle child in a way that gets overshadowed by, first and foremost, I'd say the BK-2, uh, which, well, let's, let me get to a few specs of this knife here real quick. Five and a half inch, 1095 CV blade, about $115, 3 16 of an inch thick, You've got a thumb ramp and the clip point shape there at the front, very reminiscent of the BK-9, the bigger chopper. And of course, the uber comfortable Becker handle scales that just plain let you work for hours and hours without raising hot spots, without feeling like the knife is fighting back against you as you work, which is a cool thing. But in this size range, you know, that five and a half inch blade, You've also got the BK2, which offers a drop point shape and a thicker blade stock, which has long been established as like this unbeatable, un indestructible companion, the camp companion, of course, that its name suggests. And so if you're looking for something in that size range, the BK2 is always going to be more brutish. If you're looking for something with, you know, a more general purpose knife with a, a slightly longer blade like this, the BK-16, although shorter with its simpler drop point, is the more nimble knife, the easier to carry knife. In a way, the BK-10 kind of sits in between those two. It's very durable. I mean, it's got the same thickness as the bigger BK-9 chopper. I already mentioned that knife here. But it doesn't have the brute force power of the BK-2 or the nimbleness of the BK-16. But it has a nice cross section of both. If you like the bigger handles of the, uh, the full size Becker series. This is an easy choice to recommend for just your basic belt knife. You don't need something that's super overbuilt. You just want something that's gonna work and it's still gonna work really heavily and stand up to a lot of abuse. It'll still do that, even though it's not as thick as the BK2. That's gonna pay dividends in the slicing geometry as well. This is gonna be much, much nicer for camp food prep and any other kind of slicing need. I don't know. What else is there to say about the BK-10? It just does the work. And in a way that kind of sums up what a lot of these knives today are about. They may not be getting all the headlines, but they're behind the scenes, quietly getting work done, never complaining, without drama, always working. And that's a Becker knife, first and foremost, but the BK-10, especially in the Becker lineup, I would say. Uh, next up, how about the Buck compadre camp knife. This thing is very cool. It's about 120 bucks. You've got a 5160 blade steel. Nice tough stuff. Not as thick as something like the BK-10 right here. Uh, and it's hollow ground kind of leaning into Buck's kind of hunting knife heritage a little bit more, which I think is why this knife might get overlooked because, you know, it, it's kind of reaching a different target audience than most of Buck's typical hunting knife uh, you know, history would suggest this is more in line with the kind of SE style survival knife genre, even if it does have a hollow grind as opposed to a flat here. But you've got very tough steel. You've got the bolt on micarta handles. Leather sheath comes with this. It is just super sturdy feeling. The hollow grind is going to help it slice better, uh, keep the edge itself uh, or the thickness behind the edge a lot thinner for the finer work. And with a tough steel like 5160, and about an eighth of an inch thick spine, you've still got enough strength there for a knife this size to do some pretty heavy work. Wouldn't go like swinging it around, chopping with it on the end of a stick, spear style or anything like that. But this is a very, very sweet knife. And it's gonna do that hunting stuff too. If you just want something that feels a little more overbuilt than your typical hunting knife without giving up that performance, definitely worth a look here as well. Next up, a flipper from Boker. Uh, this is the Little Friend, and one of the reasons I think this knife uh, may have been a little overlooked uh, is the standard version of this knife with an S35VN blade and G10 handles is about $173. This one right here, however, this Knife Center exclusive, hits an incredible value for what you're getting. 
and I think more people should know about it. Uh, we've got Burlap Micarta Handles S90V Blade Steel, so a ton of edge retention, 150 bucks for this exclusive right here. The blade itself is just over three inches long. It is a bit on the thicker side for that durability, and S90V, although it's not gonna chip and shatter on you uh, readily, the extra thickness here will give it a little bit of extra strength because toughness as we measure the steel itself is not, you know, is not the highest toughness steel on the market right here. The extra thickness helps with that and the edge retention with the high flat grind there still helps it perform very nicely day to day. The Burlap Micarta looks good, gives you a little bit of extra grip as well. You can see on the back that this is a Jesper Vaknes design, always worthy of calling out. We have an inset liner lock, as I mentioned earlier with the Dextro, having your liner be inset like that, it's not necessary, but it is nicer. It just makes it feel a little bit more put together in a way. We do have a deep carry pocket clip on this knife. It is inset with those flush mounted screws, which means not only will it not snag going back into your pocket, it's kept way low and out of the way until you need it. You have Nice pop of gold color there at the back and pop of red around the pivots. Let's flip it. It does flip very nicely. Washer, or sorry, ball bearings in the pivot here. You can flip or reverse flick it with the uh, thumb hole, or of course you can just slow roll a thumb open as well. Super capable design. It's kind of a continuation of the F3 series uh, from Boker, but with, in my opinion, a more versatile blade, the drop point here, as opposed to the uh, clip point of those old knives. Very, very cool. All right, this next pick may be a little controversial. And in fact, we were kind of going back and forth a little bit uh, with it here in the office as to whether to include this or not, but the Gerber 06 Auto. If you know about it, you know how reliable, hardworking, and just plain great these knives are. If you're not, you know, I know a lot of people will kind of dismiss this knife because they've got something against the brand. Uh, they don't think it's gonna you know, stand up. They think it's gotten a bit of a reputation as a slow opening auto, and that may be true. It's not the fastest out there, but especially when they're broken in, even though this one right out of the box is quite nice, they are reliable. And like I said, if you're in the know on these, you know. The people I know who have actually used these knives swear to and attest to the fact that they are durable and just get the job done. This is a, uh, a special version of it with the OD green aluminum handles and S30V blade comes in about 218 bucks, uh, but the series starts uh, closer to the $200 mark uh, with you know blacked out materials uh, on those. You can get it in a Tonto as well. Or in, uh, with and without some serrations, I think is also still an option. 3.8 inch blade, aluminum handles, not a huge amount of grip there, so super large hands out there might not have uh, the best grip on the knife. Protruding backspacer at the back for a striking point. We have an easy to use safety switch there on the side. We'll lock the button out from being used in that closed position. Nice big button to find when you're ready to fire. And then you can slide the switch back up to keep, you so, to keep yourself from accidentally disengaging that button. You know, there may be flashier automatics out there nowadays that get the headlines, but as I talked about earlier, the true hidden gems are just chugging along, getting the job done. And that is certainly what the Gerber 06 Auto does. Last but not least, we have a Wii Knife Company, a Ray Laconico design. This is the Esprit. This is a very sweet knife. Several versions of it. And it starts around the $216 mark. This one right here is $219 with the orange peel titanium. Contoured front and back frame lock, as you can see. Very nice blade shape. Three and a quarter inch, 20 CV steel. And the reason I especially like this knife is it sits like right in between, you know, the three and the three and a half inch uh, size roughly, but it does a lot of things that make the Sebenza series an enduring classic. You've got the strength and rigidity of a frame lock and you've got this cleanliness to the design. And that's, you know, all credit to uh, Laconico's eye. He does these kind of silhouettes so, so well. You've got the refined nature of, that something like the Sebenza might bring to the table, but you've got a hard working thing going on too, where this knife would look equally as good dressed up or dressed down. I say that about you know a lot of knives out there nowadays because it happens to be something I kind of gravitate to and like to show off those examples. 
but it's equally at home in the slightly classier settings, but it is ready to get down to work. I mean, throw this in a pair of blue jeans and it would not be out of place. The action on this knife is pretty darn good as well. You've got ball bearings in the pivot, thumb studs, and a front flipper. Thumb studs work great. Now channel regulars will know I'm not the best at front flipping. So for, to me, for me to be as into this knife as I am, it being a front flipper, it's gotta tell you something. And that front flippiness works well for me. I dig it. I like the blade geometry here, especially. You've got thin enough with a high enough flat grind to slice really well. And then you've got that nice long swedge along the spine, removing that friction from the spine as you're moving through materials. It just hits everything, so many things, so right. Deep carry pocket clip inset with flush mounted screws, internally mounted over travel stop. The orange peel texture on this titanium is gonna feel nice and rugged. It's a winner. You can also get them with, uh, with some carbon fiber options on the uh, front side as well. If you like that kind of look, either way, I think you should check this knife out. And I hope it sticks around for a good long time. Uh, we and their, uh, their subsidiaries, Civivi and Sencut, they have a lot of churn in their lineup. Things kind of come and then they go after a little bit, of, little bit of time. But I hope the Esprit sticks around. You should all buy them so that they get the message. It's a good knife. But that's all we've got for this episode of Hidden Gems of the Knife World. Let me know what you liked. Uh, let me know what you didn't like. And let me know if there's something you might like to see in the fourth installment, which don't know when we're gonna do that, but it will be coming along at some point, of course. If you want to get your hands on any of these knives, check out the links in the description. Those will take you to KnifeCenter.com, where don't forget about our long-running Knife Rewards program, allowing you to earn money towards a future knife when you buy one of these knives today, up to 5% in some instances, and if you play your cards right, sometimes even more. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center, signing off. See you next time.